By the time you're watching this video, the North Man has probably been out close to three to four weeks, and shit, depending on where you live, it might not be even be in your local cinema anymore, which is a real shame because I would tell you to go give your money to it right now, sitting on a modest budget of 70 to 90 million dollars, and with the Northmen worldwide only being able to rake in half of that money back in 43 million dollars, it basically guarantees that the climate of movie making in the landscape of the non-casual viewer is destined for the same thing over and over again. More generic brand action movies that bring nothing original to the genre, more formulaic superhero movies that are going to keep coming out until the day I die, vanilla rehashes of classic films for that quick and easy nostalgia bait, and dinosaurs. Wait, actually, I'm kind of okay with that one. <laughs> so funny. My point is, is that you would think a movie following a runaway prince on the path of revenge and blood for his uncle, after witnessing him kill his father in cold blood, determined and motivated by nothing more but to avenge his father in an epic Viking era time setting, that would be something right up most casuals alley. Don't get me wrong, the gore and the violence might not be for some, but you would think with all of the millions of fans of Game of Thrones, even after the disastrous piece of trash that was the 7th and the 8th season in the Vikings TV show, that there would be a more general audience for this type of stuff. But I guess at this point, most people have just been infected by THE MESSAGE. But for the people out there that did happen to go out and catch this movie, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. But for the people out there that just happened to miss it, or even say stumbled across my video thinking, hmm... This isn't Marvel, I wonder what this is. The movie centers around our main character, Hamlet, a Viking prince who happens to witness the uprising of his traitorous uncle and murder his father. With a daring escape and vowing to avenge his father, save his mother, and kill Fjolnir, we pick up with the character around 20 years later, basically as big as a fucking grizzly bear, and with his instincts and skills just as deadly. After going through a spiritual journey of some sort, which happens a couple times throughout the film to create beautiful imagery, as well as keeping the audience on their toes about what's real or if it's all just in Hamlet's head. He remembers the sacred oath that he swore to his father all those years ago, and sets on an epic adventure to complete his quest. That's basically the plot of the movie, and just when you think you might be watching a film about a hero's journey, the film makes a sharp right turn into a tricky thing of subverting your expectations. But in a good way. It turns out that the traitorish uncle that Hamlet thought Funer to be, and the kingdom that he was going to win back is nowhere to be found, but a simple and in a way retired viking, ran out of his own kingdom, exiled that he got from the blood of his brother, and living in isolation on the hills of Iceland, living out his days as a farmer, with Hamlet's mother and kids of their own. Instead of going in head-on in a Rambo-style situation and being a one-man army taking out dozens of forces just like the lazy writings we have nowadays, Hamlet instead enforces a mixture of physical and psychological warfare, slowly tearing down and killing the forces closest to Funer right underneath his nose, and playing the man as a slave in order to crack his mind and earn his trust. But throughout the story, you start to learn more about the character of Funer and the situation that leads Hamlet and the audience to thinking that everything might not be as black and white as it seems, and with prior knowledge, motivations, and expectations now being flipped around on the character of Hamlet and us the audience, it forces you to think, is Hamlet even the hero? Is his quest even a righteous one after learning all of the information as an adult, compared to maybe the fabricated and the biased vision that he had as a child? And it gives you a chance to have a deeper level of thinking of who's in the right and who's in the wrong, and maybe what you would even do in a situation like this. As I've said before, Alexander Skarsgård is an absolute beast in this movie. He looks savage and brutal throughout the entire film, in a setting where basically anyone and everyone can kill you at any moment, because raiding and fighting is really the name of the game in an era like this. But it's not just the set pieces where the actors shine, but in the scenes where he's taking in the knowledge and the plot twist just like us, the audience, we're looking through the character's point of view, and he did a really great job at displaying the different emotions that would be in his mind for the character of Hamlet. Anya Taylor-Joy has slowly but surely been making her way onto the scene of being one of the best young and upcoming actresses of the time now, with films under her belt like Last Night in Soho, The Queen's Gambit, The Witch, Split, and New Mutants. Oh! Yeah, I'm sure she was quick to forget about that one as quick as we were. She plays a fellow slave character that meets Hamlet around halfway through his journey, forming a relationship with the character and becoming a helpful ally on the sake to finish out his mission. 
She's basically in every scene after being introduced when you take out the set pieces, and she really looks the part of the character that she's betraying, as if you could really picture a woman looking like this back in this era. And the way that her and Skarsgård are able to display a believable and genuine romance in this time was handled above and beyond my expectations. Now, I'm definitely not an expert on the subject, but I would like to say that the accuracies of the time of the setting that it was being displayed was pretty good. The mythology and the culture was engaging and different from anything I've ever seen. And you can tell that a lot of research was put into the film to make sure that everything felt exactly right. And the way that the film was shot with the larger-than-life drone shots of Iceland all the way to the raging open water of the sea, it was really engaging to see on the big screen. And honestly, the big plot twist of the film and the ending set piece was just the cherry on top of a film that kept me engaged throughout the entirety of the runtime. And it was the same thing with movies that followed the same type of vision like The Last Duel and The Green Knight that never make back the money that it's needed in order to continue to get creative and artistic works of art that cinema used to be. And if more people went and saw the film, I think that most of the general audience might find themselves actually liking a thought-provoking but epic film about a Viking's hero's journey to maybe even thinking to themselves, hmm, maybe I do want more films like this. And I definitely want to talk to you guys about the plot twist of the movie because I was just as surprised as Hamlet, to be honest, and I didn't want to spoil it in the video. If you're one of the people that happened to make it out to the theater to check out this movie, what did you think of The Northman? And if you haven't seen the movie, does this video make you want to check it out or were you already going to check it out once the movie hit streaming services? I really hope you do because if I had to sum this movie up into one sentence for you, it would be The Northman is a film we didn't know that was coming, but a film that we needed. Make sure to go like the video and subscribe to the channel to go check out more videos that I've made because maybe I've already talked about your favorite movie or TV show, who knows. And there's nothing more than I love to talk about people with the same passion for films and entertainment as I do. But that's all the words I got for today, so bye.